What's up, Michael here with Fitter Media, and in this video, I'm gonna show you everything that Webflow didn't show you about their brand new plugin that literally lets you copy and paste Figma designs into Webflow, and they're completely mobile responsive. So as a quick overview, if you haven't seen the news, Webflow dropped a brand new plugin that installs into Figma, and you can simply copy and paste your designs straight into Webflow. And not only does it create classes for you and all that, it's also mobile responsive and it's very, very cool. I've seen other plugins like this. They were like Chrome extensions. The one that I saw recently, it didn't do a really good job. Your design was kind of all over the place and you had to spend so much time cleaning it up. This plugin by Webflow, however, looks very, very promising. So before we get into the things I'm gonna show you, we are a Webflow development agency and we build websites for startups and tech companies. So if that is something that would interest you, you, there are links in the description where you can get in contact with us, but let's get right into it. So the first thing that I want to go over is classes. So if you haven't watched Webflow's video, highly recommend you do. I'll link that in the description below, but I have just a basic layout right here. And if I open up uh, this design, go into the sidebar under the layers, everything that has a layer name, this will automatically apply as a class in Webflow. So let's see what that means. So I'm going to copy this header section right here. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go to my plugins. So I'm going to start the Figma to Webflow plugin. And you're going to have to choose a Webflow project that you want to use it for. I'm going to use it under, I already have the project selected. I'm just going to copy to Webflow. All right, now that's copied and I'm going to go to straight to Webflow and I'm just going to command V, paste it in and there we go. As you can see, it looks identical to the Figma design. Now you can see this header is wrapped in a frame called section dash home dash header. And if we go over here, it is wrapped in a div called section dash home dash header. So that is one way that this will create classes for you in Webflow. And that is the way that the Webflow video shows you how it works. I actually discovered there is also another way that you can create classes in Webflow. And if you are a Figma Pro user, you're gonna absolutely love this because it's way more powerful. So for example, if you're using Figma styles, so I'm just gonna remove this right here. If you're, if you're using Figma styles, so on this heading, we have a style over here called H1. It's the topography style that's setting like font size, everything, like you know what this means if you're a Figma user. You can have these for colors too, so we have the color here. If I select this header, so I'm going to copy this one, copy to Webflow, I'm gonna go over to Webflow, I'm just gonna undo what we did here to get that out of the way. And I'm going to paste this in. This automatically has a class called H1. However, if we go over and into Webflow, you can see if we get this piece of text, the layer name is h1-heading. So as you can see, it didn't use that as the class name. That is because this is using a Figma style called h1. So when you have a layer name applied and you also have a Figma style applied, it is gonna use the Figma style as the class name. So if you're a really organized Figma user and you have everything controlled by Figma style, so all your colors, all your fonts, things like that, you're gonna absolutely love this because you can just copy things over into Webflow and you're gonna have the exact same naming convention that you used for your styles. Okay, so now we know how elements are named with classes in Webflow. Now, what happens if we have an element that has the same layer name, however, the styles are different? So what I mean is, let's go over here and for we'll use these uh this this feature section right here so we have this uh let's go down let's go down to that those headings so we have this piece of text and as you can see it has a figma style applied called h2 and all these headings have the same one so if i open up this the middle one has a text style called h2 they all three do now for the center one, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to text align it to the center. And the first one, as you can see over here, it still has the same Figma style, but its text isn't aligned to the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this section. I'm gonna go to Webflow, I'm just gonna remove that again. I'm gonna paste that in. And as you can see, it says H2 perfectly, just like it said in Figma. However, if we go to the second one, you can see the class name is H2. Too. So it just created a brand new class. So if you want all your classes to match, you have to make sure that they have the exact same styles 
and name applied. But that leads us into the second thing about classes. If an element in Figma does share the exact same Figma style, and it also has the exact same style, so you didn't apply a custom style to it like we did to this one, it is going to retain the same class name. So this third heading right here, we didn't change no style to it. It is sharing the sa exact same class as this first heading, which means in Webflow, now we can use the power of classes. If we need to change the color or something like that, they're all connected. So as long as you make sure you build your Figma designs with that in mind, you, when you copy everything over into Webflow, the classes should be able to keep everything connected. Now that kind of leads us to HTML tags. If you don't know what they are, they are similar to classes in Webflow and we use them a lot for setting base styles in a style guide. Uh, HTML tags usually cover things like topography and links, stuff like that. In this Figma plugin right here, you can see we can set HTML tags for an element. So this is a H1 heading in the Figma plugin, we can set this as an H1 heading. And if I were to copy over this section and paste it in, you can see it made it an H1 heading in Webflow, which is perfect because obviously that has a big impact on SEO. And then we don't have to set it manually and we can also change the heading type right here. However, the only downside about this is this doesn't create styles for the HTML tags so for example if i were to remove this uh this um class h1 dash heading and then i were to do the html tag all h1 headings you can see it's back to the default um project settings okay so the next thing is copying over color swatches and typography styles so in the webflow plugin if we click on these three lines you can see we can copy all text and color styles we can copy all text styles or we can co just copy all color styles now, first when I saw this, I thought specifically if we have a Figma uh, style applied, so a Figma color style, for example, I thought that if we were go going to then copy all color styles and then paste them into Webflow, I figured that it was going to automatically create global color swatches in Webflow, but that's not actually the case. So if I click on this color swatch, the gray, and then scroll down, it did apply the gray color, but it's not a global color swatch. These are just some other swatches I had from some other testing in here. Um, you're gonna have to manually then go in and create the color swatch using the color that it dropped in here. Now that's easy enough, but then I figured, okay, so once we drop in the colors in here from Figma and then we create a global color swatch, if we then copy over a design in Figma that is using the same Figma style like color swatch, would it copy over into Webflow and automatically use the color swatch that we created? And that's not the case either. So for example, let's use this header again. So this header is actually using the gray background from this color swatch. So in Webflow, let's make sure we have a color swatch created. I'm going to create the color swatch and I'm going to name it exactly what we have over here. It's gray with a capital G. So I'm going to create that color swatch. So great color swatch and then gray hit enter now I'm going to go to a new page and then I'm going to copy in this header section. so I'm going to copy that to Webflow now let's paste it in let's check the background color on the section scroll down and you can see it still applied the same color but it didn't apply the global color swatch that we created so I again I don't know if they can do that but again, that would be really cool to see. And it's the same thing with typography colors. So if we were quickly to copy all text styles and then go to Webflow and paste them in, it is going to copy over the text styles for the project, but it's going to apply those text styles to um, classes and not HTML tags, which again, I mean, it is pretty good, especially if you're working on a small project, you can just use the, the uh, classes, I guess, instead of the HTML tags, but it would be really cool if you could use, um, if you could apply the styles to the HTML tags in Webflow. Okay, so I have just one more thing to show you. This is found in the Figma to Webflow plugin settings, but be sure to stick around because after that, I'm gonna go over some ideal use cases that is perfect for this plugin and also some use cases where it might not be the best option yet. So in your Figma to Webflow plugin settings, you can get to that by clicking on these three options and then plugin settings. First, you can set a class prefix to 
all of your classes. So I'll just show you how that works really quick. So I'm going to add a custom class prefix. By default, it's Figma. So I'm just gonna keep it that, or I'm just gonna name it Fitter, the first word in our agency name. And then if I were to copy this section again, copy it, go to Webflow. You can see over here in the navigator, all the styles, I mean, all the classes start with the name Fitter. So right off the bat, I'm not sure exactly what you would use that for, but I guess it is kind of a cool thing that they let you do. The next thing is if we go back to our Figma to Webflow plugin settings, I was not expecting them to have this, but I was really surprised when I saw it. So immediately when I saw that Webflow dropped this plugin, I was like, man, this plugin sounds really cool. However, Figma operates off of pixels. And when we build Webflow websites, we use REMs. So I was like, okay, I guess we'll just like, if I were to use this, you'd have to manually go down through and change everything to REMs. Actually, if you go to the settings in this plugin, you can change the text size unit from pixels to REMs. And then you can set the default REM value. Now, the only downside here is it says text size unit. So again, if I were to copy this header section, paste it into Webflow, and then go under the header with the header text, it is using REMs perfectly. However, it's only going to use REMs for font sizes. It's not going to use REMs for padding. Um, if I go to the container, it is not going to use REMs for max widths or anything like that. It's still going to use pixels. I wish it applied it to space and in general, but it is kind of cool that it adds it to at least the font sizes. So obviously this plugin has some really good strengths and it also has some big weaknesses, primarily coming down to the classes and the um, HTML tags. But what are some ideal use cases for this? Well, there are primarily three use cases that come to mind that this would be perfect for, and that is a simple personal website. So you need to get yourself up a website really quickly. You can easily design it in Figma a lot faster than you can build it in Webflow. And then you can just copy everything over and there you go. It's not a big site. It doesn't really matter um, how it's built too much. That is an ideal scenario. The next thing is like landing pages. Say you need to get a landing page out very, very quickly. You just quickly mock it up in Figma, copy it over, and then like you can build it better later. And then the third thing is kind of like what the second thing was, but if you're a startup and you just quickly need a landing page, very simple to impress investors, you can easily just mock it up in Figma and then again, copy it over. And that is like a perfect use case for this plugin. The only use cases that I wouldn't use this for are would be big enterprise projects. So when we build big projects, we are coming in and we are setting up full design system, a style system in Webflow using global classes so that we can manipulate the entire design of the website straight from the style guide so that when these companies need to update their branding or do something, they can literally update everything globally from the style guide, everything from like spacing between sections to global typography styles like if you if you're a professional in webflow you know what i'm talking about those are something i don't think i'd use this plugin for currently but overall i think it's a really cool plugin specifically for people who they're great designers in figma but they're not that tech savvy when it comes to webflow they can literally copy over their designs and not worry about it but i also want to hear from you drop in the comments what you think about this new plugin and let me know if i missed anything in this video